Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. This is a live show on Ustream. If you're watching the recording on YouTube, it's a live show with mostly live people. <laughs> so thanks everybody for being here. And uh, it's a little stuffy in here. It's overcast, so I'm going to probably be fighting with the light to keep it not too bright but not too dark because of the overcastness. Let's brighten up just a little for now. We can always darken it if we need to. So what I pulled for this morning, and um, and thanks everybody for being here. I said good morning, I think, to everybody that I saw come in. If I missed you, um, welcome to the show. Pull up a chair, say hi to everybody. You're welcome, Tar Heel Teresa. Thanks everybody. Uh, we were just talking, well, last the last show we did um, on ideas and inspiration. We just kind of made up a list of people, places, and things, something to pull from. One of the girls um, here actually made a spreadsheet. <laughs> Marie, that was awesome. She did a spreadsheet of all the different uh, prompts that we did, and then she pulled three with uh, using playing cards to pull numbers and pulled three things and made an awesome Zentangle drawing. Um, and so we were talking about that, and last show and I mentioned that I had this book 642 places to draw and we never got around to pulling it out so I, I pulled that out to talk about and then also a couple people have said well I can't draw you know I and so and I understand not everybody's going to be you know the best sketch artist in the world I understand that but <laughs> but what uh, I was saying before I hit record let me take a sip of coffee guys <clears throat> is that even if you just draw stick figures with your ideas, it's the ideas. Everybody's creative. You may not draw them out that wonderful, but <clears throat> I don't want that to keep beeping. But you can, if you'll write down your ideas, I mean, um, even sketch out the ideas from your prompts is your <clears throat> you're writing down ideas and you're expressing your creativity and you're using your imagination even if it may not be the best drawing in the world ideas and other things will come to you that you may be creative in other ways you might be a writer the same thing pulling different prompts from different topics will help you develop a story if you're just like stuck for a story. If you're a card maker, we've done that before, where you showed how to take three different things and make an idea for a, a card. It doesn't matter what it is, it's the idea of using your imagination in these things. So even if you don't draw them, you're still you're still developing your imagination by by uh, just sketching, you know, whether it's good or not. It's, it's getting the ideas out on paper. Because if you don't write it down, if you don't sketch it out, if you don't doodle it out, you're going to forget it. You're not going to remember like I showed, and I know it's going to flash the camera out for a minute, but I'm going to show it anyway. Marie, <clears throat> who we were just talking about, I hope you don't mind if I show your sample, Marie. So she did her little spreadsheet thing with all the prompts. She did a little spreadsheet thing with all the prompts that we talked about. And then she pulled three different ones using uh, cards to, to pull. So she has a deck of cards for just to pull. And she did a Zentangle Eiffel Tower, an ant, and a cell phone. You know, I mean, look at that. That's awesome. That's awesome right there, imagination. <laughs> and so, you know, that's the kind of thing, even if you never... Even if it's just for you to use your imagination, you're keeping your brain going. You're using your imagination. And so, you, you know, anyway, I just thought that was really uh, awesome. So thanks, Marie, for sharing that. I know. Wasn't that cool, Judy? I know. So I pulled this book, and it's called 642 Places to Draw. And we talked a little bit about that before I hit record. And I haven't drawn in the book. For one thing, the, the spaces to me are kind of tiny to draw in. I like to draw bigger. And uh, so I pulled out a, my Tone Tan sketchbook, which this is a 9 by 12. This is what I do my portraits in. 
in his paper. And I pulled this out so that because of the camera, if I tried to sketch with, uh, you know, in blue or, or in any kind of light, you know, if I just sketch, you're not going to be able to see it on white paper. So I got a, you know, I got a black and white uh, Prisma color here and I'll, I'm going to sketch on tone tan paper. I'll zoom in a little too. But uh, if I sketch in black or white, you'll be able to see it on camera. And But it's not normally, you know, I mean, I'll sketch out people, my, you know, portraits and people and stuff. I'll sketch out like in sepia or, you know, something that I can see that gets me started on a portrait. But if I'm just sketching for myself, it's going to probably be, I usually like sketching blue or with a, uh, you know, depending if I'm out. I might sketch it, um, at the museum with a um, the woodless graphite that can is thick and you can do thin, thick, a lot of things. If I'm just sketching myself, I usually just use a blue, just like the way it looks on white paper, which you can't really see on camera. And then I just bought a new uh, technical uh, pencil in with, for blue. I mean, it, it's any color lead, but I got blue lead for that. So it's a little thinner than this. But I don't like it too thin. I like to be able to see my lines. Um, but anyway, that all that being said is because if I just draw on white paper, it's going to flash out. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So I thought this might be the easiest way. It's the same way that I would be doing like drawing in my big art scroll on the craft color paper. Same thing, just smaller, right? Okay. Okay, so anyway... Um, I got that. We'll probably work on that for an, a while. And then I also pulled out the Rainforest Escape that I've been doing watercolor uh, parts in. Now, I explained before that in this book, I want to finish the whole book, but I'm not doing a full page and then moving to the next page and finishing that page and doing another page. I'm working a little all over the place. And this book has a lot of, fly, um, um, what do you call it, um, you know, flip outs. So it's, I've been working a little here and there on different parts of it, and then I'll just do a little here and there. And so I've been doing watercolor and marker. That's what I've been doing this. And when I say marker, I don't mean alcohol-based Copics and the kind that'll see through the page. Even though this paper is a little thicker and kind of feels like watercolor paper, I wouldn't trust a, a, a alcohol-based marker to on this you could test it you know uh, and if it's one-sided so if you want to put something behind it you don't care if it goes through just make sure you put something behind it when I say markers I just mean like the watercolor markers or the kids Crayola water base markers I will use both and so and in this case I've also been just using my watercolor you know just my little koi uh, watercolor palette and anyway so I, I just work in a little here and there in this. So we might do that after a while. So if y'all have any questions, put them in caps. Again, it's a live show with a live audience. And um, yeah, if y'all, if you're new here, you want people to get to know you, feel free to put in your link. Or I know I like the flip outs too, Jamie. I like the flip outs too in that book and pockets. Yeah. Um, and if you're a regular here and you've done something new on your blog or your website or you did a new YouTube video, feel free to share. Links are open and you can share, um, share your uh, work, your links, your site, whatever. So, hey, LBO. So, what I thought I'd do, and I'm going to leave up to my prerogative. Let me bring up my iPad here. Oh, and then we also talked about uh, references. And I pulled a couple things here and uh, told, let me get up some images here. I was telling people that, um, you know, what, what am I looking for here? Hang on, guys. There. Um, you know, I, I happened to flip to the Space Needle. Well, I had no idea what the Space Needle looks like in my imagination. I mean, I could kind of guess, you know, but any artist is going to use references. If anybody says, I don't use references, <coughs> they probably haven't been drawn very long. <laughs> or they don't draw anything. They just whip things out of their, you know, what it had. 
but that doesn't mean that they know how to draw anything, any form of real realistic drawing because nobody has the whole world and unless you have a photographic memory and have seen everything, you don't know what everything looks like. So if you're going to try to say, oh, I don't need references, you're probably not an artist. Don't email me. <laughs> don't email me. Because you're going to, if you're an artist, you're going to need references. Um, nobody has that good of, a, of a, a memory. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to draw, again, I'm going to draw on the tone tan paper just because it'll show up on camera. Let me zoom in one or two here. That's probably good. Let's refocus and relight. This is I use this because it focuses. This did too though pretty well. It pulls the light in sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Let's see here. Let's give it a little. Because it is uh Hang on guys, let me uh let me refocus. It's so dark in here today. All my lighting is not helping a whole lot. But that's pretty good. I think. We'll see. How's that look, guys? That look pretty pretty clear. Is it still a little dark? We'll see what happens when I start drawing. Hey Paula. Anybody else popping in? How the um how the interview go or the your first day? I forget which one it was. Um your start of your New job. I mean, I know you already did the interview. I didn't mean interview. Um, so, <clears throat> so anyway, I just thought that that we could maybe play with that a little bit. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm gonna have to zoom out one. That's not working. It's too dark. Too dark. Not focused. Any better? That's a little better. Um, okay, so I just thought we would do randomly pull something from this book. Oh man, this is this is horrible. I'm so frustrated with the lighting. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> we'll just keep trying to see how what happens when we start drawing. So when we were talking about the prompts the other day and just pulling things out or making your own list, making your own prompt list, finding somebody else. We talked about using uh, Jazz's Arty Party app and, you know, there's there's different ones out there. You know, the, the jar that we had from the mixed media um, group or the mixed media prompt jar from Brins a few years ago. You know, you, you can just do whatever, but you just need to practice. Happy National Lazy Mom's Day. Is that true, Hippie? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, anyway, so this is 642 places to draw. There are also 642 things to draw, 712 more things to draw. There's all these books. You can get them at Barnes & Noble. They're not very expensive. I think this was $16.95, but you can get coupons and your discounts and all that. So, I got my iPad with some references, and we're just going to play. Again, I'm going to reserve the judgment. If I pull something here, I can't find a good reference, we're just going to move on. <laughs> uh, so, let's just see. So, I'm just going to, again, just kind of open the book at whatever. And I know you're not going to be able to read it. Look how little the writing is, and look how small. Like, this has four little spaces to draw it. That's why I'm not going to draw in the book. I'm going to draw bigger. Um, but also, also so that you can see on camera. So I got a black and white. We'll test it out. Okay, the first one is Graceland, which you know is Elvis's house. Okay, let's see. We're gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna go with it. Let's just see what kind of pictures. Again, I have no idea. I mean, I can I kind of imagine what Graceland. Uh, it's been years since I've actually seen a picture. So um, you know, you gotta look things up. All right, so I am going to just look and oh, and the other thing I wanted to say too. I hope I'm not too loud. My my camera is pretty close to my face. 
Yeah, uh, Bryn's, Bryn's blog, like Jean was saying, is Nitty, Nitty, like K-N-I-T-T-Y, like you knit, Nitty Treasures, and it's posted there, but I can't tell you how far back or anything, so that's where the, uh, oh, excuse me, the original prompts were. Uh, and also when you draw something, whether it's from a prompt like this, or if you're drawing from life, or you're on, you know, urban sketching or whatever, you, you know, unless you have hours and hours to sit and, and spend on one thing, you're probably moving along. Like, for instance, when I draw at the museum or the aquarium, <coughs> you're moving along. So you can't really sit there. You can, of course. You could sit and spend, you know, six hours drawing one statue or whatever. Um, but you're usually moving along. And so you're probably going to pick and choose bits of things you want to draw. Love to hear what the mixed media jar. I could do those. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Kim, that's the one we're talking about at Nitty Treasures. There it is. Grab, grab, that, uh, grab that link right there, uh, Kim. The one that Jean just posted. Thanks, Jean, for posting that link. Nittytreasures.blogspot. Yeah, that's where you'll find uh, the, the journaling prompt challenge is what it was called. Thanks, Jean. Okay, so if you're going to just draw a bit or parts of something, um, you know, draw what attracts your attention or what is your focus or what is, you know, appealing to you. For instance, on Graceland, I'm looking at a picture here. Let's go to this one. It looks kind of big. Um, the columns and the front of the house. Or even just the, 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 portico, the porch, the portico, the porch area. And I'm not, I don't draw a lot of, um, I don't draw a lot of architecture. Let's see if I should draw in black or white, guys. Let's see. Um, since I'm probably not going to add too much color, uh, you know, maybe I'll just draw it white. <clears throat> um, so I'm really uh, I'm really liking this porch so I'm just going to like maybe just draw a bit of the um... okay hang on cups are cold hey honey I'm streaming what's up no I have any of you Okay, well, let me know if you hear something. All right, bye. Um, so you might just, you know, just pick up a, a bit of something you like. Okay, this isn't going to work. It's not close enough, is it? Let's see. Um, I think maybe, I don't know if I should zoom in. or Let's try again, guys. It's so dark in here. I'm really fighting the light this morning. I'm really fighting getting light. On everything. Let's see if I can get it to focus. I use this card because of the hot pink, helps the camera focus. But all right, there we go. Nope, I lost it again, didn't I? Did I? Okay. Um, so you know, find something like th that. This one, ha the porch has these little, and I know there's names for all this. There's this little, these little. Um, I think it's called dental molding. Because it looks like teeth, dental molding along the top, and that's the first thing that kind of attracted me. So, because I'm not at Graceland, I'm not trying to document a trip there, you know. So I'm just picking, you know. Well, you can do it either way. If you whether you're there or not, you can pick what you want to draw. But I'm just it has this dental molding across the top of the porch like this. So I'm just kind of just doing with what I what I want to what I see and what I want to draw so if you have any questions put them in caps otherwise I'm just kind of just showing you how I would sketch I'm just drawing from I'm drawing from um, you know a reference here <clears throat> Sandy's why she can't log in okay hi Sandy so I might just like this porch and the other thing that I'll do when I'm sketching, of course, I got to keep sharpening my pencil here. I would probably be sharp, uh, you know, drawing either in pen, like I said, my woodless graphite, which I can get lots of different thick and thin and thick lines. Um, 
usually I just draw in white when I'm going to color something and I just don't want the lines to show but I want it to show here on camera um, what was the other thing I was going to say I was going to say something else and I forgot got off on a rabbit trail oh uh, notes if I'm like if I'm just going to draw with a pencil or a pen like at the museum or on uh, at the uh, what do you call it a uh, um, aquarium then what I'll probably I'll do is I'll write down notes I'll write out color notes and things like that rather than uh, color on the spot I just rarely do that I uh, usually call I usually uh, what do you call it a uh, write out notes sorry guys I'm try <laughs> trying to think and draw and you know all at the same time <clears throat> Lindsay said she loves Ellis Presley almost as much as Terry loves Jazza. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I really just like this porch area. So I'm just kind of making a, a few little notes as, as to, you know, the porch. And this one, this column's back behind this one, and a little bit of a shadow area. So it just, you know, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each item because I just want to show y'all how you can pick and choose what you want to draw. Okay, my picture's crooked, my thing's crooked there. My camera's crooked, actually. Let me line my camera back up. My camera's crooked. Hang on. There we go. So, and then this one's got kind of a flat, it's not a real column, it's like a flat column against this wall over here. And then the roof line, the roof comes up over this way. It goes this way. This is the front of the house right here. Oops, sorry guys, I gotta keep remembering. So this comes across over here. And then the roof line comes out this way, hangs out that away, attaches there, and there, and then comes over that away. I have no idea, Marie. Okay, so anyway, I, I think uh, I think he had had one. Uh, it, I think his, he had a twin brother that died at birth. I think that was the story, the the case. I haven't really, heard, you know, listened to any Elvis stories for the longest time. So, again, <laughs> the only reason I have this is because it came up in the, uh, it came up in the, uh, what do you call it, the, the challenge, the book, the book. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, y'all feel free to post your link so everybody gets to know you. You know, everybody gets to know each other by going to their sites and their links and following their blogs and their videos and everything else. <laughs> so anyway, guys, while we're doing this, I'm seeing all these comments, right? I'm seeing all these comments. This is the kind of thing. Now, this is what I would do. I always keep, you all know, I always keep post-it notes handy. But you can keep any, like, um, what do you call it, um, composition book, idea notebook, whatever you use, you know. Uh, I'll keep uh, post-it notes close by, and then I'll transfer those that information into a... Uh, into my idea notebook whether I just take like here's one of the new girls here I'll, I, if I write something down like Elvis some something something somebody said here or whatever something that I want to remember then I'll just take that and I'll throw it in my idea binder until I have time to like file it or you know write, rewrite it in a under a tab or something where I'd want to remember it um, 
so yeah let me sharpen my pencil okay then he has in front of the house the other thing that's attracting my attention is he has these two out at the out at the curb or at the at the front of the house he has these little um, and I can't see them very well they're really tiny so you know having not being able to see them but he has two lions uh, like here's the steps to the house there's the steps right here and then coming up the steps on either side of the step he has these lion statues not near as big as uh, the ones in front of the library um, what's her names? Um, oh, what's her names? I don't even have a book on it. The the name the lions out in front of the. They start with a P. Not I keep wanting to say Pride and Prejudice, but that's not. <laughs> well, I'm gonna just draw them a little bigger here than they are. Um, what are they? Somebody here will know. I could look it up, but I'm sure I'm sure um, one of the snapping turtles. One of the snapping turtles will get get the names of the uh, the lions. <laughs> oh, hey Claire, anybody else popping in? Natalie. <laughs> hey wee hootie. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, I, what I'm trying to show you here is, you know, you can just you, what, however much time you have to sketch. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I get tickled at everybody's comments and things too. This. What is their names? Okay, I'm gonna have to go get the book. Hang on, I'll, I'll get coffee while I'm getting the book. If you're watching a recording, just fast forward. I'll be right back. coffee. Okay, let's put it way over here out of the way. Uh oh, my pencil shavings are blowing in the breeze. Okay, so I'm still here, guys. So I, I pulled up three three books here that uh, I, these are great books here. Take a take a little rabbit trail. And uh, Nicholas Bazbane's. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This was the main one that I had read. It's called A Gentle Madness. It's about uh, bibliophiles and book collectors and it's an awesome book. I don't even remember how old it is now. It's pretty old. I'm just going to do a quick little book talk since we're talking about inspiration and ideas. 1995 so this one, let me, I'll just turn my iPad off for a second. But, uh, by the way, the, what I was trying to think of was Patience and Fortitude. That's the name of the lions. Okay, so anyway. <clears throat> the passion to possess books has never been more widespread than it is today. Indeed, obsessive book collectors remain the only hobby to have a disease named after it. A Gentle Madness is an adventure among the afflicted. Richly anecdotal and fully documented, it combines the perspective of historical research with the immediacy of investigative journalism. Above all, it is a celebration of books and the people who have, um, who have revered, 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 gathered, and preserved them over the centuries. Author Nicholas Basbanes, a dedicated book bibliophile himself, begins his book 2,200 years ago in Alexandria, when a commitment was made to gather all the world's knowledge beneath one roof. 
In a series of lively chapters, the continuum then passes through the Middle Ages and the Renaissance to the 12th century w with a special emphasis on book lore and book, book culture in Great Britain and North America. In the second half of A Gentle Madness, Fastbanes offers a gallery of revealing profiles of living collectors and presents exclusive examinations of the great contemporary stories. And he talks about rare book collectors, book thieves, book, you know. But anyway, it's an awesome book. And I bought it in hardback, of course. I'm sure it's in paperback now. Then I think this was his second one, uh, Patience and Fortitude. And again... In 1995, Nicholas Basbanes introduced a resident for... Okay, oh, he's going to talk about the other book. Now, in Patience and Fortitude, Basbanes continues his dis discursive adventures among the gently mad, expanding his focus to probe the more comprehensive concept of book culture. Visiting many key book places around the world... He talks with a striking variety of kindred spirits, each one a living testament to the unending relevance of these essential artifacts in our lives. <clears throat> Drawing its title from the unofficial names of the marble lions that guard the New York Public Library on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, Patience and Fortitude explores the changing form of the book over the centuries and describes the nature of the institutions that have evolved to contain them, including academic, public, private, and national repositories. So that's this one. Oh, I think Terry's putting in links. And then A Splendor of Letters, is the permanence of books in an impermanent world. <clears throat> and this one came out 2003. Okay. In Splendor of Letters, Nicholas Basbane continues the lively, richly, anecdotal exploration of book people, places, and culture. He began in 1995 with A Gentle Madness. I'll go on and see. Basbanes offers a consideration of the many pressing issues that surround the role of books in contemporary society, such as the willful, willful destruction of books and libraries. And, well, and then he talks about different cu cultures and countries where they destroy books. Um, okay, so anyway... That's, that's his, uh, I, as far as I know, I think he has, he might have a new one out now, but I haven't, I haven't bought that one. So there you go. There's a little bit of, if you like books, <laughs> all that because of uh, patience and fortitude. So yeah, we got some <laughs> little lions here. Bibliophile Unite, right after this chapter. <laughs> ah, Julie, Julie Topaz. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh anyway so and then this main here is like a real curly look is there mar they're white marble statues right in front of uh in front of uh, graceland so <laughs> i just wanted to kind of indicate them there you know <laughs> okay so let's move on shall we to another let's go on to another prompt i just want to show you you know you can just sketch out bits right Okay, so, um, the, another one, let's, all right, what, what we're going to do is we're just going to open the book and we're going to just pop it open and pick something. A Pacific Northwest Fish Market. Okay, so I, I've seen a doc, not a documentary, but I've seen, um, like, fishing shows and stuff like that where they visited those markets. So I don't know, um, let's see, I think it's in, C is it Seattle? Seattle fish market let's just see what we got here whoops Seattle fish market so even if if it's not something that interests you again guys um, okay fish did I get that right ah here it is Pike's place fish market I think that's the big one I think that's the uh, one that I'm thinking of public market okay let's go back I want some I want some more images here let's just go to Seattle fish market 
So even if you're, you don't draw a lot or sketch a lot, you can still, you know, look at the pictures and, and you know, might get a, um, a story going in your head if you're wanting to, um, world famous, yeah, Pike, I think that's the one. Okay, so they have this giant sign, Pike Place Fish Market. Pike's place is awesome. Even saw them tossing the fish. Yeah, Pat. Um, I, I, that's what I've seen on TV. I've not seen it in person. But yeah, so they're tossing. And, and here's the sign here. I'm not going to, you know, again, guys, I'm just sketching, okay? I can't even see the top of the sign. It looks like there's a, a top of a fish up over off the, off the page there. But the sign has this big fish. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the sign, guys, not the not somebody throwing the fish right now. I'm just looking at the sign. But there's a fish on the sign, and I can't see the whole thing, so I don't even know what that looks like at the top. But there's a little guy here, a little cartoon guy, and he is throwing the fish. <clears throat> he's got one of those little caps on there. and he's, well, I'm, I'm just, I don't think this is, well, maybe it's showing up. So here's the fish right there, and it has a little guy there throwing the fish. Okay, so let's like block in the sign here. So big round sign, and then it's got one. He's wearing those uh, waders or those a big one of those aprons that um, you know that protect you from fish guts. <laughs> Anyway, then he, his foot's coming through the sign. Got the foot there. And then he's got the sign here. It's world famous right in here. Got the banner. So it just depends on how much time you have to draw. Just I, I'm just like picking something out, right? Just picking something out here. <clears throat> so I got the sign coming around here. And it says world in bold letters. I need to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> World famous. Like that. This is what the sign looks like. Right. It comes down here. It's connected like that. Connected like that. Hey, Teresa Dreamer and everybody else. Now, if you want, you know, if you got colors with you, you could add in because the sign is like a bright orange and green. I'm going to turn it like this so I can get a circle. And then the fish kind of pops out over the top of the sign there. I can't, it's cut, the sign's cut off, so I don't know what, what's going on up here. Sign, I mean, the, the picture's cut off right here. And then he's got his holding, it's like he's throwing it. He's got a little hing hing, da da da, his little face is there. He's got the little suspenders on, and then it says Pike. Sharpen my pencil again, and that's one thing about using a color pencil to draw with. And it comes around here saying Pike Place. So you can just get as much information down as you can when you're sketching out in public. But you can spend more time. just depends on how much time you have. Right? And this kind of comes down. Market. Else like this comes around like that. Anyway, <laughs> and he's tossing the fish. <clears throat> so there we go. That's all I'm gonna draw on that. Okay, next. <laughs> Now the girls are all talking about food. Muse going, my weakness is bread and butter. Hey, Carol Renee. 
All right, let's just see what else we can pick here. All right, so we're just going to, okay. A stand-up comedy club. Yeah, I'm going to pass on that. I want something a little bit more. Um, okay, let's see. Victoria Falls. Okay, there we go. Let's look up Victoria Falls. Now, when I think of Victoria Falls, I always think of, um, yeah, I'm not even remembering now, Dr. Livingston. <laughs> you know, when he, was he the one that, first one that saw it or discovered it or, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong on that. Okay, Victoria Falls. Okay, now there's different views of it. There's side views, straight on. There's, um cliffs on one side it depends on where they're taking the photograph from left right straight on okay so like for instance this one right here is taken straight on from across the river <clears throat> we're just going to draw just i'm just trying to show you all a few more ideas and we'll go into a color book Okay, so over across, like if you're standing over here, you got a, like a little rock face over here. If you're standing across the river, you know, you're standing over here on the rocks, right? You're standing over here on the rocks. So you are here. <laughs> okay, and then the falls have... It's all right. So we have some mist because you don't see down here. It's all misty. I sharpen my pencil again. <laughs> Should maybe do this in paint. Paint would be quicker, actually. You know, like we did the dog sketches. Okay, so we got the mist going on down here. There's a rainbow coming down here. You can't see how deep it goes down here. You can't see. You know, you don't know from when you're standing over here. You don't know how deep down this goes. No worries, you love those. <laughs> a couple of solutions, yeah. Well, you know, I'm just trying to get y'all to see. You can just sketch. It's the ideas. Even if you don't get it down exactly, it, you, you're going to um, you're going to get ideas, guys. You're going to get lots of ideas. So this whole thing goes, and I think it's kind of a panoramic photo because the the way the fall water is going. It's kind of going in two directions. But anyway, so I got some thicker ones here, thicker ones here. I mean, um, heavier water flow right here. And then some thinner ones. But it's really, really big. Okay, so sharpen a pencil again. You got to keep sharpening. It goes down quick. Maybe I should be drawing with something else. I don't know. I just try to find something that shows up on camera. You know, that's my thing here with you guys is trying to show you something that um, shows up on camera. Okay, so this comes down past the rainbow because this is like it's supposed to be a rainbow. And it just goes all the way off the. And then way across the way here, you can see little trees. So let's just do like a little, almost like a little bit of a landscape thing way back there. But I don't want it touching the water because then you'll think that's part of the water. And we want this to be like part of whatever's going on. Some kind of, it almost looks like a satellite over there. I can't tell if that's a satellite dish over there on that side because it's little. But there's uh, stuff going on across the way. And then you can see a few clouds. I'm just going to toss in some clouds here. Across the sky. <clears throat> yeah, so if you're just joining us, we're just picking out prompts out of the 642 places to draw. And again, looking up references so you know what it looks like. Of course, I love me some clouds. I love waterfalls. I love all this. You know, I love uh, I love doing mist. I love doing water. I love doing clouds. 
So if we want to, okay, let's just take a rabbit trail here. Hang on, let's, oh, oh. I forgot I used my coffee trays for. I got tons of them. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play for just a minute. We're going to need a brighter blue, I think. Let's get a nice sky blue. We're going to do a quick little, well, it says Victoria Falls in the picture. <laughs> so, again, it depends on the view. I mean, I think Victoria Falls, the main, the, the main picture that you're used to seeing is kind of from the side, the side view. And then let's see. Get a dark gray. <clears throat> We're just going to do a little play, guys. And let's see, maybe a little rocks on this side of it. Oh, let's go with the. Let's go with the. No, that's too red. Mm, there we go. Get a brown. Just gonna do a little. Let's see what we can do here. Just got inspired to add some paint. I will add paint to anything. <laughs> All right. Where's my palette knife? All right. All right. Just gonna do a little quick little paint. All right. Sit. I'm gonna take some brown. I'm gonna add over here. Jean, I'll tell you, speaking of Jean, seeing her here, our Jean has come so far. And I know I say this all the time, and I brag on Jean all the time, but I'm proud of our Jean. She would not even touch paint like a couple, a couple years ago. And now she will, she, she uses song lyrics mostly for her journals. And she will take, and her... I won't say her, it's her imagination and her, um, just her ideas from a song. And she will make the most heartfelt journal pages, the most heartfelt journal pages from a song. And it's just, it, it's, we're, I'm just so impressed with all of, uh, of it, Jean. I mean, and, you know, I, Jean will be the first one to say that she's not, you know, the best artist, drawer, sketcher in the world. But her art journal pages are so meaningful. There's, they really mean something to me because of Jean's heart in them. So that's just, I had to throw that out there. Okay, so now I'm going to cover up these clouds real, for a minute because I want to put in a blue sky. So we'll go back in with the clouds. Okay, so let's make the sky a little lighter. Okay, just want that there. Then I want a little across the way, just so you can kind of see that across the way there's some kind of, you know, something going on over there. I, I can't tell if it's trees, and like I said, one of them looks like it could be a satellite dish. I'm just going to put a little bit of that. I'm going to get some gray here, and I'm going to... Put this just behind the waterfall. You've got to have the dark to have the light show up. I'm going over color pencil with the wash, so it is kind of like still coming through, which is fine. Which is fine. So we're just going to do a quick little Victoria Falls from across the river. And again, I think it was Stanley and Livingston. Which one was it? Stanley and Living was it Livingston? Yeah, Stanley was the one that disappeared. No, Stanley was the reporter. Livingston was Dr. Livingston. Yeah, I think he was the first one to document it. Okay, let me hit this with the heat gun. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm trying to stay in camera and feel close up enough to see everything. And again, this is just paper. It's just on, you know, sketchbook paper. On uh, the tone tan paper, which I love for drawing. Okay, let's put that up there. Let's get a baby wipe. We'll do a couple more quick drawings, guys, and we'll go on to something else. I'm trying not to spend more than an hour, an hour and a half on these. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take and get some baby wipe and some, let's do some uh, clouds here. They're a little bigger than I want, but we're going to... And you gotta kind of let them dry just a second before you can put another layer, because they'll otherwise they just kind of go bye bye. A little bit of cloud, a little bit of cloud action. See, it just wants to fade back in. So once it's dry, you can add another whiter, whiter layer. To make them pop. You know what I mean, Vern? And then down here, like I said, down here we had the mist. Should have probably should have done the water first, but that's okay. Got the mist stuff going on down here. And let's get a gotta clean my brush because that's gray paint in it. Let's make it go straight because it's, it's looking a little crooked. We don't want our waterfall crooked. Because it's kind of a fisheye view on the on the on the photograph. Because I like I think it's a panoramic, so it's kind of like, you know, it's a little off. So I'm going to kind of try to draw it straight down here. And again, we'll have a little foaming up down here. Get a little dry brush in a minute to get some, uh, like, make it look um, sketchy, scratchy, like, you know, your waterfall can have, you know, kind of, So I'm just going to get the initial bits in here. And over here, there's some thinner ones. A little thicker one over here. And then thinner ones. Let's get some tops to those. Flows. A little thicker right here. Okay, then let's see if we can put in a rainbow. Think we can pull off a rainbow? <laughs> it's not much, there's not much uh, splash that you see, but I'm going to add just a little bit of the tiniest bit of just a tiny bit. 
down here in the splashy bit, in the foamy bit. And then let's see if we can do a rainbow here first. Let's see what we can do. You really only see the red, yellow, and blue. So let's, let's start with white here. So that the, the colors will show up. You gotta have the the light there to put the color on. Oh, let's dry it. might do it with pencil, probably be easier. Let's see, let's move some of this out of the way. Look. Give it yellow. A blue. It's a light blue. You don't see it. It's not a dark blue. And a little bit of red and orange. Alright, so what we're going to try to do here is just a small indication of the rainbow. Keeping it subtle, keeping it subtle. Almost could use a little bit of white right on the light part. Let's just kind of blend that in a little bit. Okay, I've got our arch going a little crooked. Thanks, Jean. Very subtle, very, because it's far away. You want it to be. And then what I want to do now is take a little bit of, let's get a little bit of mist here and just kind of mist, kind of mist over the whole thing. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit more white with my fingers, do a little bit more clouds in there. Too much, go back in with the baby white, kind of blend it back out. That one cloud's a little too, let's go back over that, a little too white. Let's get rid of some of the harsh white there. Keep it subtle, very subtle. Okay, then the far away blue, it's going to be far away up there. The top, it's going to be darker. Then what we're going to do is just take a little bit of, let's see, it would probably be easier with Posca, but I'll just go in with the pencil. And I'm just going to add a few little extra oomphs. So this is my version of Victoria Falls from a from a photograph of across the river. And then there's actually some little grasses and things over on this side if we wanted to go that far. Let's get a little olive and we'll just do a little bit of I'm going to get a uh, liner brush. It's not too many 
you know, real long ones here, but it, it kind of gives you a, a good, um, it gives a better, another perspective if we have some grasses over here popping up on our side of the river. So I'm going to put a few in. We're standing on the side. And then maybe just a tiny bit of And we're going to call this one done. <laughs> Get a little bit more texture in the rocks. Oh, our little guy, we need to cover him up. We don't need that little guy. That, it's not wanting to go away. He doesn't want to go away. Look. Well, you know what? Maybe we don't see it. Maybe over here. Wait, I got to dry this. inspired me so we had this little guy here but you know what I'm gonna do is what if there's some little glyphs over here if there's some little glyphs very subtle little glyphs you know on this side of Victoria Falls yet to be discovered Yet to be discovered glyphs. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's fun. See, just gotta play, not be afraid. Use your imagination and play. There we go. Now I don't like this white dot there. It's too much. It's too stark. Let's add a little bit more depth. Okay, there's our Victoria Falls from across the river with our little meadow thing going on over here. Of course, you can end it wherever or however. I'm running out of green. Okay, there we go, guys. There's our little, uh, there's our little, uh, Victoria Falls. All right, we'll do one more something quick. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I hope you had enjoyed that. Okay, so let's, shall we? Shall we go for it? <laughs> All right, let's see. A bird sanctuary. A bird sanctuary. All right, let's just look it up. Let's just, of course, you could just draw any bird, you know, but I'm, we're trying to draw places, not just a thing. A bird, whoops, a bird. I don't even know, I don't have to put in bird, a, let's just put in bird, sanctuary. Yeah, we're drawing Graceland, Victoria Falls, and a bird sanctuary. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oops, I don't want news. I want images. All right, let's see what we can find. Okay, so far I see a lot of birds, just flocks of birds flying. Lots of flamingos. Is Eileen's not here? <laughs> 
Your backyard's a bird sanctuary, an Audubon bird sanctuary. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right now when I brought that up, it's just showing me tons of pictures of signs. Signs of uh, the sanctuary and lots of flocks of birds. We could draw some flocks of birds, but I'm not, I want to find something a little bit more. Here's a rock face. Uh, Norman Bird Sanctuary. Uh, just a bunch of rocks and a couple of birds. Let's see. There's a little pavilion. I really was kind of thinking, you know what I was imagining in my head? I was imagining like Queen Victoria's gardens and bird sanctuary. <laughs> That's what I was kind of imagining. <laughs> let's let's pick something else, guys, because I just don't want to. I don't feel like drawing a flock of birds. I want something a little bit more. A brewery. <laughs> Oh, a brewery. Well, we could look at inside um, a flower conservatory. See, that's what I was thinking, like Queen Victoria's, um, you know, those, those. Um, oh, you know, let me just put in, I know there's an, I don't know if it's, it's not called Queen Victoria's. Is Claire still here? <laughs> no, I think she's gone. Anyway, what's it, or any of you UK girls? The the fl the floral the flower conservatory in UK flower conservatory. I don't know if it's called Queen Victoria's. You like the brewery? Okay. <laughs> we actually well okay conservatory in. Okay. I'm not sure if there's, you know, what the name of it was. Greenhouse and Conservatory. Let me get some images here. Okay, again, lots of pictures of, I guess I could have just put in my botanical bar, uh, garden, botanical garden here in Atlanta. Okay, is this the one I'm thinking of? Is this the one I'm thinking of? This is, says to look on Wikipedia, but I'm thinking, is this the one in, that I'm thinking of in UK, guys? Kew Gardens? Is, this, is that the one I'm thinking of in UK? Yeah, everybody's giving me all kinds of names now. I don't know. See, I'm just looking under images now, not... not um, names. Q Gardens. Okay, let me look that up. Okay. K E W Gardens. Images. Ooh, that was a cool pagoda that. Oh, what's that? Is that in Q Gardens? Uh, yeah, look at that pagoda. All right, we're going with this. I like it. I like that pagoda. But I was actually looking for the buildings, you know, the. Yeah, look at this. Like, look at that. Dang. <laughs> it's so big. Oh. Yeah, and the in the mazes and the gardens is a lily pad, lily pond. I like that pagoda. That's a cool element in the gardens. Let's let's make up something. Okay, we're gonna make up our own thing here. We're gonna have that pagoda in here. All right, I gotta sharpen my pencil again. <laughs> I'm in love with Kew Gardens. You practically live there, really, Lindsay? Okay, there's. I want to do two elements now around this pagoda thing. There's really I don't see any a pond right there, but I want to do my own thing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, and I don't know if it's actually a pagoda. It's some kind of a. It's some kind of a structure, right? And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the bottom one's ten. One, two, I don't know if I have room on this page. I made it too big. I made it too big. I think. 
Okay. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> And again, I'm not the best at drawing, you know, architecture. I don't practice it enough, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Move this bigger. Ten. But what really what I'm trying to get at is I want to draw a koi, not a, a, a like a pond around it. I just want I want to kind of do this, and then I saw this picture of this pond. Where is it? Let me save that picture because then I'll have to keep going back and forth. Okay, I'll save that picture, but then I want. Uh oh, I didn't save it. Oh no! Come back! Come back! Hang on, guys. Nope, I lost my reference. Kew Gardens. This picture. There's another little pagoda over there. Let's see, let me grab this one. All right. It's called a hot house, a Victorian greenhouse. Yeah, but I wanted the name. I wanted the Victorian Queen Victoria's name. Was it? Is it Q? Is that the one I'm? Is that the one I'm thinking of? Yeah, I wanted the official name. If it's Q K E W, is that the one that she? You know, and I I don't know what you know what this has. You know, it's just there. Uh, yeah, we have botan. We have our botanical gardens here. I'm just one. I guess I'm thinking of the famous one. The famous one. And they're saying it's Q. K E W. Okay, now let's go back to images because there's a pond. There was this beautiful koi pond. Or, yes, this one. The majestic life of plants at Q Gardens. This picture right here. I love this picture. Okay, come on. Come on. Go back. Okay, hang on, guys. It froze up. There we go. It's been there ever since you were eight years old. Well, then that's not it. Kew Gardens is older than you. I mean, uh, the Queen Victoria's Gardens would be older than you, Lindsay. <laughs> it is Kew Gardens. Okay. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> All right, I want to save this picture of these lily pads. I like these lily pads. See, now I want to draw lily pads and koi fish. <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so this little, let me sharpen again. <laughs> I, I almost just want to do this almost like an illustration where like this would be in front. Like you're, you'd have looking at a koi pond like really big behind it. Okay, so let's see here. It goes this way. It goes this way. It goes down. Okay, so let me kind of get this structure correct here. It's sharper than I'm able to get right here. New York Botanical Gardens. Yeah, well, we have, you know, we have our Atlanta Botanical Gardens. I haven't been for a while. I need to go. It seems like every time we have a chance to go somewhere, I go to the High Museum. I don't go to the the Botanical Gardens. It's been a while. And I also need to go to Fernbank, the Natural History Museum. Go draw some dinosaur bones. It's just a little, it's really off, guys, so don't email me. Okay, let's see what the bottom one looks like. Here's the biggest one. And this is like where the door is, and it's just like a, it's kind of like a, this is where the columns are holding it up. 
Oops, sorry guys, got off camera there. But these are all like, if you're looking up at it, I almost need to do it in black. Maybe that will show up better. I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up spending way too much time on this and I don't want to. I want to spend time on the, on the, I want to draw my lily, paw, pa, lily pads. <laughs> so I'm just going to draw a couple of this part because so I just get the idea. Okay, so let's get the structure in here. Kind of get the structure coming on. I'm trying to stay in camera, guys. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Again, guys, it's a little crooked, but oh, you have seen. No, I haven't gone to the Chihuly exhibit yet. I mean, uh, I don't even know if it's still there, to tell you the truth. I don't know how long it was going to be there. I mean, I know he has a standing, uh, he has one of his pieces that's there all the time. But I don't know how long his exhibit was going to be there. scrapbook corner anybody else popping in just doing a little sketch and we're gonna I'm gonna finish this I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up here in a minute I didn't really want to spend all this time on this but we picked it we picked it out of the book sorta I mean it was a flower conservatory and I went from that to Q Gardens key is it Q is it that's how you pronounce it K-E-W and this is one of the pagodas or a, a pagoda or some kind of a tower it looks like it might be in a Japanese garden section of the of the uh, ex, of the place I really wanted to draw some lily pads and koi fish but you know We did draw Victoria Falls. Good luck, Vicky. Bye, Vicky. I don't know good luck for what. I didn't see what was going on. But... Okay. Where, I'm going to make a note. Where, where is... Does anybody here from UK want to tell me what they know about like where it is, where's where's Kew Gardens, and you know any other notes I might want to take, or does anybody know exactly what this? And again, guys, I can look it up, but I'm drawing and just thought maybe I'd interact with you guys, <laughs> interact with you guys to make it like part of a conversation.
Julie's still there. Oh, okay. Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, Suzanne's in Atlanta area, too. Okay. Thanks, Suzanne. Get, need to get over there. Now, I mean, burnt. This is a little crooked, guys. Sorry. I'm kind of looking at it at an angle. I need to straighten up my paper here. What not pay so much attention to chat. But I can't help it. I want to talk with you guys. The Royal Botanical Garden at Kew Place. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. I'm going to pin here. The Royal Botanical Gardens Garden at Q. And where is that, Claire? What's what is it like? I mean, I'm sure it's not in the heart of London or anything like that. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Miss Claire. I want to make sure I keep getting this, you know, closer and closer to us so this has to get wider and wider. getting a little off shape here. Richmond just outside posh area. The nearest station is Richmond. Okay, just outside Richmond. Near a station is Richmond. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Have you been there, Claire? I'm sure anybody from UK has probably been there. Okay, I just messed that one up really bad right there. This needs to really come out farther. Pay attention. Need to pay attention. <clears throat> just, all right, Lindsay said, I just go to visit. I'm not one of the posh people that live there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> too funny. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's get this last little roof area here. Let's see if I can get this kind of straight. <laughs> now this one's the last one. This is kind of like you'd almost see a little bit of a curvature to it, but you know, I'm really, I'm really off here on the side, guys. <laughs> And these are red. Um, do I have, let's see. These are like red columns here. Let's see. It looks like there's like one. Like if I can see one, two. Three, looks like I can see nine of them. Maybe one. Like where the door entrance is. It's five, six, seven, eight. We'll just put that like that. <laughs> just want to try to. I want to draw some. I want to draw some koi fish and ponds. You're just playing. <laughs> okay. All right. So now above each one of these on the actual tower itself, you can see this um, red section here. <laughs> uh, again, guys, I'm not really spending as much time as I could on this, but I just want to, you know, And then it looks like they have some kind of door, uh, maybe some windows. I'm guessing, guys, because it's far away. But it almost looks like some kind of a 
window structure like coming up the top of it I'm not sure you know some kind of doors I guess you might be able to go inside and go up to all each one has its own like little <clears throat> window or door right there let's put those in then over on this side it looks like maybe there's some kind of another little arched area that you can go out of over on this side you just have to we're imagining we're at Kew Gardens and the botanical section I mean in the uh, <laughs> not the botanical section the uh, in the um, maybe the Japanese garden section I don't know oops sorry guys I keep getting off camera all right all right we're gonna move on to a, a pond we're gonna move on to a uh, lily pad I want to draw a lily pad I just have a urge to draw a lily pad <laughs> but you know it's hard to stop once you get going on something bye Marie <laughs> sorry guys if you're kind of bored with this but uh, All right, I need my white pasta. I want this to, I want this to stand out a little more. I can't make it stand out with my pencil over there. Okay. In lieu of getting out the paint. And my little highlights there. And actually, you can even see a little bit of the highlight on the red. Right there on the corner. Okay, we're going to stop. We're going to stop. There's actually some blue-green in there, too. If I really wanted to take the time, but yeah. All right, so there's whatever that is. See, Jessica says, if you're bored, draw my little pony. <laughs> you're not bored? Okay. No, I know I'm not bored, but I don't want you guys to get, like, you know. All right, so now let's go over to the koi, I mean, go over to a lily pads. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is, let's see, I just want to draw a section of a pond, like, you know, like it's, like it's kind of part not really part of it but you know like that's like the like it was if you were illustrating lily pads along with something like this all right and then I would want some of those purple flowers maybe just three let's do one two let's do three of these purple flowers so we're going to put those in we'll put those purple flowers in we're going to paint we're going to paint guys and then let's see maybe a little one of the little buds I'm just sketching it in right now and then in here we're going to have the lily pants have a couple of these kind of heart shaped And then have one down here. Let's have this one upside down. Okay. And then you might have some just kind of floating around in there. You can't really see them well, but they're going to be behind. Some tiny ones. Talking to myself, guys. Just talking to myself. 
Good afternoon. Hey, Mad Rat. We just do a little sketch. We're going to do some color book in a minute, but I got had an urge to just show y'all drawing from some inspiration sketchbook. Well, we're actually drawing from this book. 642 places to draw. So, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get out some paint. I'm going to use just some uh, Irish moss color. And that may not be enough. Then I want some purple flowers. It has a yellow center. So I'm just going to put a dab of this stuff out here. Let's do dab. So we're going to paint it in. And some. That's, oh, not this. Yeah, it's not exactly purpley enough. Black plum. That's going to be too dark. Okay, we'll just go with this, even though this is not exact color I want, but it's purple. <laughs> and a little bit more of the moss color. And I think I'll do the very, very background with a dark, dark blue, like a real dark, dark blue. Let's see. Brush it. Oh, this one's not even opened yet. That means I have one sitting here that's open. I'm not going to look for it. Let me get up. Well, no, fl no flamingos. There will be no flamingos. <laughs> even though Eileen's not here, there's going to be no flamingos. Okay, so I think that'll be enough. All right, let me get a brush. You'll have to play along. <laughs> play along, people. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, I gotta be careful with my liner brush there. Okay, let's see. Okay. Whoops. Sorry, guys. I gotta remember to stay in camera here. Just going to do a little bit of that one's thick. All right, so our lily pads are just going to be around here. Space coat them in. Quick sketching, remember, quick sketching. Lady Quail and Mr. Bear stopped to visit you. Oh, are you kidding, Mad Rat? Did y'all get pictures? I've been following them. I've been following their adventures um, over there on the group thing on Facebook, but I didn't see any pictures with you. Maybe I just haven't got caught up. Have I not got caught up? Thanks, Colleen. Yeah, we're, we drew a couple other things. I'll show y'all in a minute. We drew Victoria Falls. <laughs> uh, okay, now let's go ahead and add a little bit of the... I'm just going to add a touch of... Let 
trust me, if y'all want stories told with art journaling, our Jean can tell some stories with art journaling. I'm not really trying to tell a story. I'm just kind of messing around with some uh, a pond here. It's more like visiting somewhere and you're sketching while you're visiting. I feel like they might be something. Like it. Yes, did you see the book where, where, where you are working out of? We just worked out of uh, 642 places to draw. We came across, a, I think it was a flower garden, botanical garden, something like that. And we're just, you know, just messing around. Okay, so now the lily pads have like fluted edges, kind of fluted edges. So I'm just going to kind of indicate that. I'm not going to, because I want to just get this done. Get her done. So they have some little fluted edges. Just going to indicate a couple of them here. Let's see, it's a little darker. Just indicating some fluted edges. A little bit darker centers there. You got 641 places left to go! <laughs> Very funny, Lindsay. Very funny. <laughs> okay. Now I just want to add, you know, I really I just want to kind of get in there now and add the water and we're going to move on. <laughs> oh, good one, Lindsay. Good one. All right. All right, so the water is going to be very dark blue, very dark blue. And it's like, a, I want the pond to like, you know, something like this. You can go back in there and add highlights and more detail, but we're just trying to make this a little quick one here. A little quick one. Here's the fluting. And this is a tall tower in the garden, guys. It's, you know, but I just like the I like the look of it. Whoops, got into the purple there. So you just got to do kind of quick sketches if you're just trying to capture something real quick. And again, I rarely take any paint with me when I go drawing. I just write down colors more than um, than I do, you know, any actual painting on on site. So yeah. 
And I don't get out enough. I I gotta say, not any. I don't that much anymore. I'm so busy here. I don't get out like I should probably. But all right, let's do a little bit more of flowers up here. They have little yellow centers. Think, think, think. I'm gonna mix up a little of that ultramarine with the purple. Make a little bit darker purple. Just get a few extra petals in there. Actually, they kind of tilt up a little bit. The petals kind of go up. Let's do that. And then there's some more. Let's see, some more. Uh, the center in there. I'm going to get too fussy. I don't want to get too fussy there. And I have the wrong shade of purple anyway, but for the this particular flower. But there we go. All right. Let's dry it. color pencil touches and then we're gonna move on all right let's see let's get a blue let's just get a cuff a little I kind of want to make sure that you get the idea that the pond is like you know it's live it's not like that mm -hmm. wavy action. It's not dark in this. Too green. I think we're going to call this done, guys. Quick little lily pad. We didn't do a koi fish! Dang! We did a koi fish. Do we need to do a koi fish on another page? That's not the purple. It's purple. We didn't do a koi fish. Okay, we might have to stop and do a koi fish before we go. We have 15 minutes before two hours. <laughs> I need coffee though. Okay, so let's see what we've done so far today. Working in the Tone Tan Sketchbook 9x12. Uh, we imagined we were going places with the 642 places to draw. And where did it take us today? It took us to Graceland, to Graceland. Those are the little lions standing out in front of the pool. I just wanted to do a little bit of the portico, got warmed up. Then we drew to Victoria Falls. 
So then we did Victoria Falls with a rainbow and our imaginary hieroglyphs or glyphs. So yeah, there's our Victoria Falls. We did that. Do a koi on another page. Yeah. Or you won't be happy. <laughs> Jean. <laughs> I just want to draw a koi fish in the pond. Because we did the Japanese garden, right? Okay, so there's Victoria Falls. We imagine Stanley and Livingston. I did anyway. Okay. And then we just did that. And now well, let's do a quick, let's just do a quick koi fish. Even if it's not in a pond. Or two. Let's just see. Let's see what we can do. Let me go find some koi fish. I probably have some saved here somewhere. But I'll just go look it up. I'm just go look up some. Let's go look up some fresh fish. Oh wait, we also drew we also drew the fish market. Where's that? How'd we miss the fish market? Oh, there's the fish market sign is on the back there. We didn't color it. That's why I missed it. Because it we didn't color anything there. Okay. Koi, K-O-I, fish. There's a koi fish pond, but we won't do that today because we don't have time. Okay. <laughs> it's been fun. Oh, good, Cam. Hey, Arlene. No flamingos. It's a flamingo and clown-free zone. Okay, so I'm really zoomed in here, guys. I hope we're still, are we still, maybe I need to focus again. Let's do another auto-focus with my card because, you know, the light changes and we lose our focus. Come on, come to mama. Okay. So, is that even better? It's worse. What did I do? How did it get worse? Come on. Okay, let's find a koi fish. Dee Dee, draw your fishy beta fish. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I'll draw a beta fish next time. I want to draw a koi fish. I want a koi. I want a koi. <laughs> let's see. I have drawn beta fish before, though. Because Boo used to have one or two. Oh, that's a cool looking one. I don't want to draw. That looks like a painting, though. I don't want to draw anybody's painting. I just want to draw a picture of one like from above I know there's some good ones in here somewhere oh that's kind of far away I want a close-up let's see oh there's some good ones let's go back oh man I lost it again I should save pictures. I love the ones with the fluffy tails, too. They're, those are a special kind of koi fish. I forget what they're called. The kind that are real fluffy. They have fluffy tails and stuff. There's one. What's that one? Is that a photograph? Ah, here we go. All right, let me save a couple pictures. I want to save that one. Because I want to draw a couple. I mean, paint a couple. We're going to do quick painting. Okay, let's go back to that one. Because it has some good ones. This one has some black in it. I like the ones that have some black in them, too. Oh, there, that one. That's a good one. Okay, let's draw those two. We're going to paint two koi fish. Shh, shh. Hey, Bryn. Who else? Anita. Anybody else I missed? Okay. Let's draw this one first. Actually, I think I need to turn it. Well, I probably have one going this way and maybe one going that way. All right, let me sharpen my pencil. We'll sketch it out real quick. <laughs> okay, because we want to fit on the page. And I'm going to try to keep doing this, guys. Because we're so close up. Wait, let me zoom out one. I might just be a little close. Let's zoom out one. Refocus. It got so dark in here earlier. Let me lighten it up just a little. 
it's still dark outside, but. Come on. Focus. I see it wanting to focus. <clears throat> Hopefully that's good, guys. I don't know. Um. I want them to kind of come around more. Have one bigger and then another one smaller, I think. Let's just get them fit on the page. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to have to turn this upside down because it needs to come around. Nope, it's because tail's going to be going the same direction. I don't want that one. Okay, i got to find a different one. Hang on, guys, because I want, I want one coming this way. and I got both of them going the same direction. I want them going both. Of, um, uh, let's see. I want one coming around this way. No. Hang on. I want to do it, but I don't want to. I want to. I mean, I want to hurry, but I don't want to rush. You know what I mean, Burn? I want to get it done, but I don't want to rush too fast. Hmm. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I'm not drawing. This is just in a sketchbook. I don't know. Maybe I missed a top topic. Ah, here we go. All right, so that one's going the other way. All righty, let's go with that. Okay. Sorry, guys, talking to myself while I find a reference. So on this one will be littler. We'll fit him in, up in here. The tail flapping over. It's like he's curling over on top of himself. Something like that. Okay, and then this one. So I want to just kind of paint them in real quick, like. And their eyes are kind of almost on the outside of their head. Curling over on himself like that. Okay, I think I got him sketched out. All right, let's get some orange and white paint. Get crack a lacking. Okay, orange, white, and black. Okay. Don't need any more Prussian blue. Anyway, guys, thanks for just hanging out here. Put the purple away. Don't need the purple. What am I looking for? Orange. Bright orange. I need a bright orange and a shadow orange. This one's almost empty. Oh, paint booger. white. 
This one's almost empty too. I think it's almost time to stock up on my some colors. All right, let's paint. Let's paint. So I wanted to get to a color book page. It's 11, 12, 1. Barb comes on at 2. We could maybe do one more project after this. All right. It's been too long. Quick fish. Frying up us some fish. Not really. We're not going to eat any koi. Do some quick koi. Quick koi fish. Whoops. Didn't want that. I want a darker. In. Oh, we got a brush. Alright, so let's put a little eye. Too big of an eye. Too big of an eye. And do quick koi fish. Okay, let's go back to this one real quick because I want some orange. Get a little koi fish in here, real quick. I wanted this one to have some black in it. Let's do this. So anyway, guys, I got to uh, and some koi to satisfy my koi craving. <laughs> okay, I got too much paint on my brush.
Let's send reading through. Oh, look at my mailman. I wonder if it's pouring down rain out there. Don't think it's raining. It's just dark and overcast. I think it might rain. Okay. I'm going to qu quit on the koi. Did I want any black in this one? Eh, why not? Let's see. Let me find one that has black in it. Let's put a little black in his tail here. Give it a little motion. Ah, it's raining hard where you are. Okay. Okay, I'm going to quit, guys. going to quit on the koi, but there we go. Anybody got any questions or anything? Because I'm going to stop this recording before we go on to another one. Oh, let me show again what we've done. Even though this is wet, I hate to try to close the book. That needs some shadow right there. I need some shadow right under that side. There we go. That's better. Okay. They're cute. <laughs> they actually need some brighter white. But again, guys, I could sit here all day long and fussy. This has got its little fin going down the back of its body. Okay. And the tip of his face. Let me get a little rounder up there. Okay. Thanks, guys. Let me dry it real quick because I'm afraid to close. It'll stick the pages together. Actually, this fin could look like it's attached just a little better. Oh, go, Trina. Yeah, I wanted to put them in that pond, but I forgot. Of course, that pond was kind of little, so... They would have been much littler. And actually, you wouldn't see this much. Hang on. You wouldn't see this thick of a... You'd only see a little indication of a little wave down his back. Not quite that thick. But got a little carried away with the quickness of it. Okay, so we're going to quit on this. So, yeah, again, we were just playing out of that 642 places to draw. 
and they we just randomly picked some things out of there and one of them was a garden um, well a botanical garden so we went to Q Q Gardens UK and uh, then just drew a little pond there and then that's what made me want to draw that then we drew Victoria Falls and with our own glyphs and yeah so we just did a couple of little things in the sketchbook today so I hope you all enjoyed that I do want I was going to work a little bit watercolor in the uh, rainforest escape so if you all want to hang around while I stop this and save this recording and then go grab some coffee and we'll be right back so thanks everybody for watching and uh, yeah, hope you have a good weekend.